All right. All right, folks, thanks for again for uh, showing up. Uh, let's uh, go through these few PowerPoint slides. Uh, I'm Dylan Malik. Uh, uh, thanks for joining us to look at the uh, assembly and drafting part of what's new in Solid Ed series. So uh, for those who aren't familiar with Switch Technologies, uh, we're an award-winning lead provider and partner of Siemens PLN and are also partner with other leaders in the industry. Uh, including Mythic Graphics, Mark Forged, Camworks, Map3D, and Keyshot. Uh, we're here to help you meet your goals with the best software solutions and technical support. We're committed to delivering professional services and training solutions that are designed to change the way designers and manufacturers learn and leverage DLM tools. All right, so for uh, today's agenda, we're covering uh, what's new in ST10 assembly and drafting. Uh, so there's a few uh, demonstrations we're going to go through and I'll show you. Uh, well, if there's any questions, please feel free inside the GoToMeeting box. <clears throat> there's a questions uh, location. I'll take a look at those at the end of the presentation, see if anybody had any questions. So if you want to write those down, we'll go ahead and just add the questions. And as we go, I'll uh, again, I'll take a look at those at the end. So for what we're going to be looking at today's topics are so skip count and the pattern in the long curve, which is at the assembly level. Uh, so that allows you to uh, do things like uh, the chain I'm going to show you how to uh, create and animate. Uh, so it's basically the pattern long curve is there. They just added the new function of being able to skip features or skip locations. So we will show you that. Uh, there's, uh, we've had 3D Sketch in multiple environments the last couple of releases. Uh, they've added some new technology into it at the uh, assembly level. For example, uh, for those who are familiar with frame or uh, the piping and the tubing, uh, the express route uh, allowing you to create paths. Uh, so you can do that now with 3D Sketches. We'll show you that and some of the other things you can do with it that are uh, kind of cool. All right, and assembly and part feature variable suppressions. Uh, at now at the assembly level, uh, we can do, I guess it would be more of a configuration kind of layout where you can make things animate, move. Uh, at part level, it's more of changing geometry, which I'll demonstrate. Uh, so I'll uh, cover that. Uh, clone components. Clone components are very much like duplicate, and except that it doesn't require uh, coordinate systems to, to work. Uh, it's kind of working off geometry, and uh, it, it's very fast and very easy to use. Uh, we also have the associated retrieved dimension. So this is some of the new stuff in draft. The ability to uh, tie your PMI dimensions. Uh, we can always retrieve part PMI dimensions. Last couple releases, we can retrieve assembly PMI dimensions. So for those who want to go paperless, being able to uh, throw PMI dimensions while your callouts, all that on assembly or parts, Great, uh, but we can now retrieve those uh, for those who want to just take the time to do it at the 3D level and bring it into draft and just retrieve those. Uh, there's associative dimensioning now that allows you to change uh, the, uh, the assembly parts or uh, the callouts and they prompt you at the uh, draft level now. Uh, so you kind of know when things are out of date. Uh, also, of course, uh, with the uh, draft, uh, we have balloon access to the bomb. Cut link. So frame members that have a specific link can now be associated at the, at the balloon. And I will just describe how to do that. And just the last thing is cover bomb cell override. Uh, we can go in and actually change some formatting. Uh, not that exciting, but I will definitely show it to you. Okay, so let me uh, switch over to Solid Edge. All right. All right, so what we have here is just a simple sketch. Uh, go ahead and show you the profile of it. Uh, just simply, uh, just a couple of marks and lines. If I do an inspect, just to show you what we're working with, we're working at 276.86 millimeters. Copy that, so, so just to show you where the numbers are coming from. So uh, I know specifically that the spacing uh, on these guys, it's six millimeters. So uh, if I divide that by six, we're looking at roughly 46 links to go around uh, this curve. So that's kind of where I'm going to get my math from. 
right, so the first thing we're going to do, these are two separate parts. So we're going to do two separate steps. We're going to do a long curve uh, twice. So let's just go ahead and just start with this guy right here. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and, again, pick the curve total profile. Uh, we always have to have a start point, so let's uh, grab the point on the sketch there. There we go. Not that direction. We want to go to the left, and we want to make sure that it's centered. So I'm just going to grab that in center point of that peak or the inside uh, chain link. And there we go. Uh, you notice some of the things are kind of floating off because we don't we have as a next step. So right now we're set to chord length. So obviously we have different types of uh, steps here. If you want to just tell it exactly how many, you notice uh, that skip option that we had here. So that's the new one. So skip every one or every two um, steps we can. So we just need to skip every one because we're going to do the other one with this link. All right, and we're going to say next. And we don't want to follow a curve. Again, we want to follow the chord sketch itself, the curve entire thing. So now all the links basically fall on the center of that. Right, there we go. So that's the first one. Second one is this link. So we'll just do the exact same steps. Get that exact same. Get the same point. Get in that direction. And make sure we have it start at this location so we're on the right direction. Again, next and follow curve. Finish. Alright, so pretty simple, pretty fast, pretty easy. So uh, just having a couple links in there, being able to follow that cord around. And now I'll go ahead and show you how to animate that. Uh, this came out last release. Uh, we had the ability to add um, motor variables. Uh, so that's all I'm going to do. So if I look over our tools variables, we have the, a couple dimensions here, uh, the 229 and the uh, 235. Those are the offsets. And I'm not specifically know why they started down at the right side as opposed to starting at zero and I guess we would be six uh, for the next link. Uh, but we're going to work with the numbers we're given. All right, so I'm just going to go in again and create my motor variable and we want to grab this first one got it and we'll leave the speed as it is I'll just make the limit 500 looks good let's add the second one and here is our second location and again match the same distance and say okay all right so there we have it uh, it's ready to go. So all we have to do now is simulate a motor. As soon as we do that, it automatically recognizes two motors uh, that we just created. And then it's just a matter of hitting play. And so there you have it. You can let it run through its duration and um, save the animation if you need a video or something like that. But again, obviously, throw some sprocket and some uh, guide chain or guide uh, roller in there and, and you're set. So, very simple to use uh, the, the, the variable motors and have set stuff up like this. Alright, so now let's kick off the next one, which would be 3D sketching. Alright, so let's go into the environment where you would typically see this, and you would typically use express routes. So, what we're going to do is run some paths between some of these uh, nozzles on here. So we'll go in the express route. And I'll just quickly just run through what your typically scenario would kind of be. So if I go to express route, you notice it, it wants to snap the center points uh, specifically. So I'm just going to snap that end point there, that uh, center point there, and toggle through the list of uh, change the segment length, etc. Uh, so that's about it. And the line segments stay as they are. Then they're basically, if you want to create a tube, use that path. All right, so what we're going to do is go into 3D Sketch. Let me get rid of that. That path. And now let's go into 
to be sketching. And you see a very similar icon it's called routing path. The exact same thing. So more than likely you'll see the uh, express route path kind of go away and go with this. Alright, so I need to turn on the peer so I'll be able to grab that. So there we are. And you notice uh, we can grab multiple types of locations now. We can grab center points, midpoints, lines, endpoints, midpoints, etc. to start from. Uh, if we happen to start from the center point of Sure, I get the center point of that. Sorry about that. Let's create a 3D sketch on top of itself. There we go. And go to that location. Kind of the exact same scenario. Uh, we have our port segment link. But uh, you notice we have some other options here. We have obviously the first off color. So maybe this, uh, this path is uh, coolant coming in and it comes out hot. Uh, so we'll just say, you know, or uh, just make that red. Center line, if you want to change the line thickness, you can do that. And there you have it. So that is a usable path. Let's go ahead and just pop another one in here real quick. Uh, let me just show you this. Let me just go ahead and draw a segment off of here. Uh, so if you're just drawing your, your normal line commands, arcs, lines, etc., you can still do that. Uh, so if I want to use a 3D sketch, let's make this one blue. Uh, so I can come out here, give it links, and then you're just into the regular 3D type sketching uh, scenario. So you have the coordinate little or the coordinate system here. Uh, Z puts you in different axes, so I can now draw in different axes. So if I want to come over here and grab the center point of that, then change it to another axial location. Again, grab the center, grab the center point, and then just come down, etc. Uh, then, if you wanted to, you know, just run a partial path, and then then use Path Path Express to kind of look locations, and it will actually, again, continually to fix finish location of the paths for you. All right, so that is the new 3D sketch capabilities at the kind of express route location. So let's you know, let's go ahead and create a couple tubes here. Uh, let's take a look at that. Uh, we're looking at 15 on the big one and that was 12. Alright, so we'll come over here and create a tube. So A15, copper, And use this path. Probably change the uh, minimum bin radius. I noticed it's. Oh, I didn't actually get the entire path. It's probably not good. There we go. And now let's create, uh, I should say, a 12 for the smaller one. And then just change that diameter of the tubing. And again, use that path. That's it. So we have our 12 and 15 millimeter diameter tubing in there. You know, if we needed to tie those two uh, locations, uh, like through a uh, bulkhead or use some sheet metal, you can obviously tie that into locations where if something changes, those will move with it. Alright, so that's, we're going to come back to this one here in a little bit to show you some of the drafting. Let me go ahead and switch over to get out of the Now I can open this assembly up. So this is uh, an example of the assembly and part suppression. All right, so I'm not going to go and uh, set up all the suppressions at this at the assembly level. I'll show you how to do it on the part here. Already, the assembly is already predefined. So if we go over to again variable table. Let's look at it at the structure view. All right, so uh, we have if then statements. So what we're looking at is some. Um, Parameters. So basically, what we want to do is take this yellow box, slide it down the conveyor to this little catch, have this go down to the next level, 
and then transition onto the angle and the slide on map. So that's what we're doing here with these if then statements. So these are the first selection here, 66, is we're looking at uh, the numerical value of how far we want this to go down. Uh, and same thing here, it's greater than 56 uh, or less than 66. So we're looking at, if I turn on the motors. So first off, we're looking at this sliding down 56. So once we get to 56, uh, it's going to go ahead and turn off variable. So let me show you how these work. So if I just right click any of these parts down here, you notice, for example, that's the yellow box, we have a mate. All right, so that's made it to this top plate. And we also have another mate that's made it to this plate. So uh, any given time, you can right click and say, let's create a suppression variable. All right, so we can also delete suppression variable. So let's go ahead and just delete that one and delete that one. Unsuppress that and suppress that one. So you immediately see basically what it does is snap from this face to this face. So we're using the uh, suppression variables to go ahead and take care of that for us. Uh, typically, you would have to kind of fudge this in an animation uh, by making a part disappear, and another part reappear, then continue it on. So let me uh, undo this back to, there we go. So let's go ahead and just animate through the steps. So we have a linear motor that's going to move it down to the end table. These next two motors, just simple linear motors, uh, it's going to move it down nine inches. So this part right here and the yellow part, once it gets there, is going to move down nine inches. Uh, then it's going to transition using the suppression variable. Then it's going to use the next one to base. Oh, that's the one I just showed you. I'm sorry. Uh, then it's going to use the next one to go ahead and slide down the table 50. Once it gets to, then that's the limit it's going to stop at. All right, so simple enough. I just showed you the simulate motor. Let's do that again. So we have obviously a few more motors from our path here. Say so okay, and let me un minimize this. Uh, so something to look at. We're looking at the bottom as the very first part moving. So that's the first part moving. This uh, is the second part that's going to do the second drop. All right, but here is the thing that's going to drop at the same time. So basically, this is going to slide down. That's not going to be here. So we need to move this time frame up to go ahead and match this. We're going to add a little, little pause in between this moving down to this, and then it and this both moving down nine. And the last thing is the transition, and it's going to move down here. Uh, we don't want that to happen at the same time again. So we're going to slide this after these happen. All right, that's it. That's all we got to do. Let's go ahead and minimize that and hit play. Zoom that in a little bit. So there is the very first linear motor, and it's going to get to the suppression variable. It's going to switch over, make to that, move down, nine, go to the next linear motor variable. It's not very smooth the way it transitions to the 45, but it's, it's, it's better than we ever could do before. Uh, so that's it. So we can now add these type of suppression variables at the assembly level. Let me uh, open up this part right here. All right, so this part, again, uh, you look at the last few features here. We have a web network and another set of web networks. Well, again, we're looking at, if I open these web networks up, you see they both, again, have if then statements. So if the length is greater than or equal to 16, uh, then the 1 and 0 means uh, it turns off. And I believe then if it gets to 16 and greater, it turns on. The second one. All right, so let's go ahead and actually do that. Let's dynamic edit that, and notice the the pattern here. So I'm going to change that from 12 to 16. Uh, so once we do that, it changes the web network. You notice now the web network previously that was there is suppressed, and the last one becomes unsuppressed. So if I change that back to anything less than 15, it goes back to the previous style. All right, so that's it's a very simple setup. So uh, let's, let's go ahead and do, let's say at uh, this level, we want the center hole here, this cutout one, uh, to be on. All right. And 
or actually at, at when it gets to 16, I want that to be on. So what we got to do now is right click, add a suppression variable. So let me turn on the variable table first so you can actually see cutout one. So there it is. And if I right click and say let's add suppression variable, it pops another entry into the table, so there's my suppression variable. So let's just copy this first one and put that right there. All right, so close that out. So now these are on. So once I get to 16, those now turn off, so they become solid again, and the web changes. So, you know, if you, again, want that reversed, simple enough, go back to the variable table and just change the order sequence here. And just say uh, zero, one. All right, so now that will be on at this level. So if I now change it back to something less than 16, 15, they turn off. All right, that is it. So that is the ability to add suppression variables to your geometry and obviously now to the assembly level. Let me switch over to the assembly. Alright. Here I mentioned we have clone, uh, which is another type of pattern function. Uh, we, we had duplicate. Uh, but duplicate actually requires like coordinate systems to position it in the right orientation, etc. Uh, but they actually added something called clone in this version. All right, so let me show you how this works. Uh, we have an assembly here, so it's got multiple parts in this little uh, roller arm. And you notice it got these holes on those parts, front, back, top, and bottom. All right, but I want, what I want you to notice is if I open this part up, this is a solid edge part. So it's got all its features, cutouts, etc. Right. If I open up this green part, I converted this into a parasolid, brought it back in, and you notice it's just a part copy. It's just a dumb body. So there's no intelligence at this level right now. It's just uh, it's body features. So just keep note of that. So let's go ahead and hand off. Uh, let's say clone component. Grab that guy right there. All right, so it just says, click on the face of the giant to find the geometry. So I'm going to tell it to look for that set of geometry. Simple as that. Uh, then these next two one are clone component adaptable or exact. So this one is, you know, if it's close, maybe the holes are a little bit larger, maybe slightly apart, it will still find those. So let's go ahead and just use the adaptable, click the parts that uh, we have it and that looks good so we'll go ahead and accept all right uh, now we have all these kind of still ghosted looking parts loading with little red dots and the reason for that is the ability to change orientation you notice these on top these are there's going to be a roller on that so it needs to be outside but some of these went to the inside so you could you can use control and go through and pick all the ones that are incorrect i kind of like just going through and just using little just series right here just to pick the ones you want. Toggle through. Obviously, you go to the inside, inside, bottom, inside, outside. So it has multiple orientations that it can be in. And that, oops, let's flip those down directions. It's right to start with. And there we go. So they now all face to the correct and finish. All right, simple as that. It, uh, each one of these now, it's an assembly group, but if you look like at that one right there, it has its own set of relationships, axial alignments, and mates. Uh, you know, maybe maybe these ones on the outside for some reason need uh, you know, a five millimeter gap. So I could go in and add a five millimeter gap to that one, and you know, they all other ones still say exactly where they're at. So they're all independently related to uh, this part and this part now. And again, you notice, it still found that part. So even though that wasn't necessarily uh, whole features, it still had the exact same kind of whole location. So it interrogates all the geometry and adds the, the features there for you. You know, if you obviously want to get rid of them, you can suppress them or delete them out of here. Group, 
enough to be as easy as that. So it's gone. Alright. Alright, so let's get back to this guy right here. Alright, so I'm going to switch over to uh, doing some of the new stuff in draft now. So let me create. Metric. Yeah. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and just pop an ISO. Actually, let's go ahead and do that here. See them. And put the ISO here on its own. I uh, didn't change that one. Not a big deal. All right. So uh, what we're going to show on this one is just this part. Let me open it back up again. Checkbox on for the PMI dimension. So we do have some uh, dimensions on this part. So let's say retrieve. Close. Stuff over here. Sorry about that. Oh, oh, let's go to the draft. Ah, oh, dang it. My mistake. Well, I just wanted to populate, turn these on. It's like some of them actually moved on me. There you go. So we can just throw a couple more on here. So under PMI, product manufacturing information. That will work. All right, so we got all right. Start with you again. Yeah. So let's retrieve that again. There we go. Retrieve that. All right, so sorry about that. So let's say at this point. Uh, you know, I had this fully dressed out, and uh, we want to put some tolerance on it. So if I pick it, it uh, grays out, obviously, your, your typical dimension, because it's being driven through a true dimension. So if you go back into it, and let's say we need to make some tolerances on you at this point. So if I pick it, of course, we have the exact same type of uh, tolerance rating we do. Maybe we need to put an inspection on there as well. Uh, we'll just say... Uh, this is 399. It can't go above 400. So we'll just, you know, we'll say plus 0, 0.0 minus, uh, you know, we can maybe lose a half a millimeter. So we add a tolerance there. Uh, we'll just put a tolerance on this one as well. Say plus minus 0. 0.1. And looks good. So now let's go ahead and switch back to the draft. So as soon as we do that, uh, you know, so our typical dimensions that we have are still the, the, the cyan color, uh, but the ones that I changed uh, basically come grayed out. Uh, so you kind of see that uh, something has changed. So we have the update retrieve dimensions now. So you don't have to go right click properties, select your configuration, check, match, and all that to make it force an update of those. You just come over here and say update those. Uh, so your dimension tracker pops up, says, hey, you know, something has changed. Let's go find it. Uh, so it sh shows you the two different values. Obviously, if it's not released, who cares? You can just say clear all and those balloons go away. 
Uh, so it's just a really fast way to, you know, bring drafts in and populate the dimensions really quick uh, from the assembly level uh, dimensions. Let me uh, bring the ISO view back in. And let's create a bomb. So, uh, part list. We'll just use the default part list here. And make sure we're on. There we go. All right. So uh, as we had before, we had the ability uh, to call out the tubing, but we also want to look at the um, cut list link. So we can come over here and say add a cut link. We can come over here and say add the tube flat link, and I don't want to call it flat link, we just call it tube link, and there it goes. So we have that always the ability to add that internal list, so there's our tubes, and the actual number, and the call out, uh, but we can now, uh, so want to, for example, modify this one, go to properties of it, we can oh, actually just go ahead and just create another one on top of that, we'll just leave that as, as is. We'll tie this to a uh, uh, part list, and we can also add a property. We can come over here and say from active document, we can say in graphic connection. And so to flat length. And if you wanted to change, obviously, the, the, the types of balloons, uh, I, I should have actually told it on the top balloon to put the actual item number. Oops, sold it. Looking at the wrong one, sorry about that. We just want this from the part list, the item number. find it here in a second. Uh, so now we can actually just get rid of that completely and just actually have the actual length of the tubes and frame numbers uh, directly in the balloons uh, so you can cross-reference them with the actual part list. All right, speaking of part list, the last thing is it's kind of de demo cell override. Um, we can always double click in here and we have some options to kind of display thumbnail, show property text, etc. So as you pick in the list, it shows an item on the list. Uh, but now if I kind of double click in there and say allow cell overrides, just right click, allow cell overrides, double click in there, and that gives you kind of the formula uh, that was in there. And we're looking at uh, three decimal places. Simple enough, uh, it's the forward slash at one is going to change the actual variable of the dimension now. So we now have uh, the three, uh, instead of three decimal places, one decimal place by changing that. And if you're wondering where I came up with that, um, if you go into the Solid Edge help files and just type in text syntax, uh, it gives you all the custom little codes like forward slash CM for custom material properties, uh, changing the limits on upper values, and obviously the tolerance of decimal places. So it gives you a whole list of those uh, types of codes uh, that works in the, the properties. All right, so that, that uh, is pretty much it. So let me uh, switch back. Let's see, open up my go to meeting. Are there any advantages to using the technical requirement annotation for call out? Uh, not really. Uh, I, I mean, there's not any advantages or disadvantages. It, again, drafting is so subjective to, from place to place. You know, everyone says they follow a particular standard, but every draft house I've been in uh, does drafting completely different than the guys right down the street. Uh, you know, and every machine shop pretty much read that, but I, I don't necessarily know if there's any advantages or disadvantages. Um, next one. Is it 
possible to make an animation from? Uh, I'm sorry. Is there? Is it possible to make an animated rendering like the chain moving? Uh, oh yeah, absolutely. Um, do I still have that open? Let me close it. Uh, I can just show you from here. So let's uh, say we were in that chain. This environment, uh, uh, you, you would you could actually make a static uh, key shot render from here. Uh, but let me actually get back to the motor. Sorry, shift to the wrong location. If I go, uh, I actually have to do the chain. Let me simulate motor. The reason I want to do that is if I expand this out down here. In this one, we have key shot animate. Uh, so this is slightly different than the tools of ERA, Explode Render Animate. That'll take you. That key shot takes you to a static. Uh, image. So if I wanted to pop this out in key shot, I don't know how long it's going to take, but let's bump everything down as low as possible. Say okay. I'll let that go. It should it should pop over to key shot. If it does, uh, and I'll switch back over. If I still have time here. Uh, let me look. There was. Between, what is the difference between 3D sketch and SC9 and SC10? Uh, the difference is they added some functionality to it. Uh, you can now use it like the, the path express inside of uh, the express route, or you're running tubes and pipes and wires. Uh, 3D, 3D, cur uh, 3D, excuse me, 3D sketching now has that built into it, uh, where the express route only creates the path. Uh, the 3D cur or 3D sketch now. Let's you change the line size, change the line width, change the colors of the lines. So your center lines will have specific colors to them as express route distance. So that that's probably the big difference there. Uh, I don't know if this animate really quick. So now you're at key shot for solid edge. If I go to animation, you'll see it down here and just hit play. And it'll basically just loop through it. So at this point, uh, all you'd have to do is uh, you know, add your color, background, and backdrop, and all that stuff, and you do your high end just render now. So you can render that as an animation. It takes a while because it's got to render each frame, but uh, yeah, so things like that can be easily exported to DeShot and uh, inside of Solid Edge. And, uh, what's nice about it is it's not using my resources, so I can still be in Solid Edge doing stuff while DeShot's kind of rendering in the background. That is it on the questions. So, uh, switch back over. So again, thanks again for joining us for the assembly and drafting. I hope you enjoyed it. I uh, hope you can make it for our next session. It's going to be on the built-in flow simulations for Minta graphics that are built into Solid Edge now. Uh, so we'll, I will show that in January. Uh, that's January 24th, 2018 on Wednesday. Hopefully we'll see you there. So once again, thanks for joining us. If you have any questions, or if you have, feel free to you know contact us. If you're already working with a swoosh rep, or you know if you want to contact him, feel free to reach out to them as well. Uh, you know, either way, we hope you uh, we're here to help you develop custom solutions, design and tackle your company's challenges. Hope to see you at our next session. Thanks everyone. Bye. Bye. -bye.